So intraday swings have been crazy in 2023, but the VIX has basically been nowhere. So what's going on? Let's dive in. Hey, Jim Schultz here with you guys for F Cubed and Live, fcubed.com. So today's story has two players, the VIX and zero DT options. What I want to do is I want to explore their relationship or lack thereof based on what we've seen so far in 2023. Now, am I lock, stock, and barrel certain that what we're going to talk about today is even correct? Of course I am. It's just code where it's about 50-50. Nevertheless, let's dive deeper into the inner workings of the VIX zero DT options and their interrelationship starting with the VIX itself. So what is the VIX? Well, the VIX is a market-based volatility gauge that attempts to measure the price swings or potential price swings of the S&P 500 index. When you have a higher level on the VIX, you can expect bigger price swings in the S&P 500. When you have a lower level on the VIX, you can expect lower or lesser swings in the S&P 500. And since the S&P 500 is oftentimes referred to as the market itself, even though it's only 500 companies, the VIX is also oftentimes referred to as market volatility, as it gives us kind of a broad-based gauge of the uncertainty or potential price fluctuations in the overall market. Now, historically speaking, the VIX has been around 16 on average, which of course doesn't mean it has to stay at 16 or it's going to stay at 16, just like everything else in the market. It's dynamic, it's fluid, it moves, it changes as market conditions move and change. Case in point, over just the last you know five or six years, the VIX actually reached a low point of under nine in 2017 when the markets were barely moving at all. And then it skyrocketed up to a high of around 85 during the COVID crash in the spring of 2020. Okay, so there's just a very broad, very generic overview of the VIX. Now, what about these zero DTE options? Well, zero DTE options, as the name implies, these are same day expiration option contracts. So you open a trade at 930 on the opening bell and then come hell or high water, that thing is going to expire at four o'clock Eastern that same day. And as of this video, at least to the best of my knowledge, zero DTE options available every day are really only available, and by really only, I mean only available, in the major market indexes, SPY and QQQ. And these guys have really caught fire in the last six to 12 months, which makes sense because, I mean, hey, why lose your money slowly over time when you can just flush a huge chunk of it today before the sun even goes down? In any event, zero DT options are here. They are new, they are novel, they are unique, and they really give traders a very, very unique opportunity to shorten down the duration of their trades down to the smallest possible unit one single day. Okay, now as many traders over the last you know five, six, seven months, especially the first few months here to start 2023 have noticed, the VIX, market volatility, it seems to be a little disconnected from the actual reality that we're trading every single day with intraday price swings. So what's going on? I mean, let's be honest. Compared to 2022, yes, the market feels a lot slower. The market feels a lot more dull than what we experienced pretty much every day of last year. But we've also had a number of super whippy days where the market's been back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. We've even had some decent down days where you get a little bit of action in the market, you get a little bit of a down movement in the market, only to look up and see the VIX unchanged. See the VIX up, but slightly. Even see the VIX down on a down move in the marketplace. So that's a real head scratcher. And it leaves you wondering what's going on in terms of market volatility as measured by the VIX and what we're actually seeing on our trading screens. Well, the reason for the disconnect, in my opinion, is twofold. First, the VIX, as we're going to see here in a couple of minutes, it's not even set up. It's not even equipped for zero DTE options. But second, the dealer response to zero DT options, that could absolutely explain, at least partially, these intraday whips that we've seen in the marketplace without even touching the VIX. All right, so let's look under the hood at the VIX equation. Now, naturally, you're probably thinking, eh, that's pretty straightforward. I mean, eligible options, settlement days, non-zero bids, that's some pretty simple stuff. 
But on the off chance that you happen to be a mere mortal like the rest of us, just glancing at this mathematical beast might leave your knickers a bit twisted up. Well, don't worry. Our goal today is not to dissect the finer points of the VIX. It's not even to dig into this guy to understand really any of its inner workings. We just need to highlight a tiny little sliver of this model to understand how it ties into zero DTE options. If you look more closely at the times to expiration in this model, in these VIX equations, you will see there are really only two times that the model is dealing with the near term cycle and the next term cycle. Those are the only expirations that it is concerned with. Sort of like a front month, back month relationship, the near term and next term are using two cycles very close to the 30 day marker. So the near term might be 24 days to go and the next term might be 31 days to go. Or the near term might be 27 days to go and the next term 34 days to go and so on. In other words, nowhere do you see anything even remotely close to a zero DTE option. So it kind of makes sense that the VIX would be disconnected from a world where zero DTE options have gained such a prevalence because they're not even measuring the same thing. All right, simple enough. Some of you might be thinking, all right, Jim, I'm tracking with you so far. But what about all this intraday volatility, or at least some of these days that have been highly volatile intraday and the VIX is not explaining what's going on? Well, this is where the counterparty hedging comes into play. You see, whenever you place a trade, there's somebody on the other side of that transaction. There's a counterparty that will take the other side of your trade. That's how markets function. So it could be a market maker. It could be a liquidity provider. It could be chat GPT, whatever. Well, that counterparty, they're not in business to take a bunch of directional risks in the marketplace one way or another. They really just want to buy the bids and sell the offers and collect the spread in between. So if a lot of one-sided action comes in, then those dealers, those counterparties, those liquidity providers, they're going to want to hedge that directional risk, oftentimes using the stock itself. For example, suppose traders are really excited about the NASDAQ index for whatever reason, and the futures market has the NASDAQ gapping up on the open. Well, right after the open, let's say a bunch of zero DTE traders buy zero DTE QQQ calls. Well, the counterparty is on the other side selling these calls, a position that leaves them with short delta or a bearish position. To then neutralize this bearish exposure, the counterparty will go in and just buy QQQ stock, leaving that original bearish position now hedged. But what happened as a result of those QQQ purchases by the counterparty? QQQ went even higher. So that modest move on the open just turned into an explosive move shortly thereafter. Okay, easy enough, but let's go one step further. Let's say over the course of the next 30 minutes, a lot of these zero DTE QQQ call buyers want to cash in their profits. So what do they do? They close their long calls, or in other words, they sell their long calls. Well, who's on the other side of these? The counterparty, again. But this time they're buying those calls that the traders are selling. And these new long calls are adding long Delta to the counterparty portfolio, often simply by way of closing out the short calls that the counterparty had at first. As a result, those QQQ shares that the counterparty needed at first to hedge that bearish position don't need those anymore. So what are they going to do? They're going to sell those QQQ shares, putting downward pressure on the QQQ price. And so now all of a sudden that impressive rally that we had to start the day is gone. It's erased or it's completely reversed. And so this leads to very, very whippy action in a very short period of time. Do this one time, two times, three times, four times in a given day. And man, you have a recipe for a very, very wild market. And you never even touched the VIX itself. All right, so thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope to help you kind of understand the inner workings of the VIX and zero DT options, at least how they're related or maybe not related will be a better way to put it. Uh, if you guys want to like, share, if you want to like the video, share the video and or subscribe to the channel on your way out the door, I would really appreciate you guys. And so I will see you guys next time.